Welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it is all connected. If that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. So all month long, we're talking about everything related to rheumatoid arthritis. So let's just get into it. So let's get started. By now, hopefully you guys know I love lists, and so we're just gonna go through top 10 things I think you need to know about rheumatoid arthritis. So this is the first part of a multi-part series, so you're gonna wanna hit that bell notification so that you don't miss out when the next video drops. So number one, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune systemic inflammatory disorder. Now I say this when I talk about all my conditions for the most part, but that's because for the most part, they are all the same in this way. So autoimmune simply means the immune system has turned on itself and now is attacking your own body. And in this particular case, one of the main parts of the body that the immune system is attacking is the synovium. Now, don't worry, if you don't know what the synovium is, I'm gonna talk about that later. Systemic, meaning it's more than just the joints that are affected. And inflammatory simply means that this autoimmunity that's going on in the body and going on in the synovium produces a lot of inflammation. And it is the inflammation that can lead to the signs and symptoms that we experience when we have rheumatoid arthritis. Number two, to call it arthritis really does it a disservice because it is so much more than just joint pain. So as I talked about before, it is systemic. So more than just the joints can be affected. So what else can be affected? Well, first off, we can get nodules. So nodules are just bumps that appear on our body. They can technically happen anywhere, but they're oftentimes seen on the elbows and the knees, but they can even happen in the internal organs. Now, these nodules are just a collection of fibrous tissue that thankfully we do not see nearly as often as we used to because we have such better treatment these days. But it is important for you to keep in mind if you've had rheumatoid arthritis for a long time and you start noticing little lumps and bumps in places that you've never noticed before. Another thing that can happen outside of the joints in rheumatoid arthritis is lung disease. Now, rheumatoid arthritis lung disease is a complication that we continue to learn a lot about. It is most likely more common than we previously thought, but thankfully, because we are now better aware of that, we are doing a better job of identifying when it's happening and treating it appropriately. Now, the changes that can happen in the lung can vary. Most of the time, it involves an element of inflammation and possibly an element of fibrosis. Sometimes, if this is what's happening, the medication someone is on will need to be changed, and a lot of times, they will then also need to see a pulmonologist who is a specialist in lung disease. Another part of the body that can be affected by rheumatoid arthritis are the blood vessels. We call this vasculitis. So itis is inflammation and vascu is va vessel. So what happens with rheumatoid arthritis, and thankfully not nearly as often as it used to, is the tiny blood vessels can become inflamed. And this can cause pain wherever that's happening. A lot of times it's in the legs. You can have a non-itchy rash. And in some cases, the skin can break and you can have an ulcer. Now again, thankfully this is very, very rare and I don't bring this up so that everyone gets scared that they're going to develop this complication, but really just to highlight that rheumatoid arthritis actually affects a lot of other organs. And it's part of the reason why someone with rheumatoid arthritis will feel feverish, they can feel very fatigued, as opposed to someone who has osteoarthritis, which is not an autoimmune or inflammatory condition. And finally, I just wanna bring up what I brought up before in other videos, specifically the video about 
arthritis in your heart, which I'll link down below, but the risk of cardiovascular disease amongst rheumatoid arthritis patients is higher than in patients who don't have RA. In fact, the risk for cardiovascular disease, and when I say cardiovascular disease, I'm talking about heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, that kind of thing, is on par with what we know is the risk with patients with diabetes. So what does that mean? That means that if you have rheumatoid arthritis, you need to be very diligent, you and your doctor, need to be very diligent that your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and your blood sugar are on point because we need to control all the other different risk factors to protect your heart and your brain. All right, number three, who gets rheumatoid arthritis? Well, classically in the textbooks, we are taught that middle-aged women are the most common people to get rheumatoid arthritis. And we're taught that because it's true. So the ratio of women to men is two to one. And the lifetime incidence for women to get rheumatoid arthritis is 3.6% compared to 1.7% in men. Now, I'm not saying men don't get it. I'm simply saying that women are more likely to. Also, the average age of someone to get rheumatoid arthritis is anywhere in between their 40s and 60s. Again, that doesn't mean that younger, even teenagers or children can get different versions of rheumatoid arthritis, and older adults can get rheumatoid arthritis. It is estimated that upwards of 1% of the U.S. population has rheumatoid arthritis, and about 2 point, nope, and about 0.24% of the global population. So although it may not be as prevalent as hypertension, rheumatoid arthritis is a reasonably common diagnosis. Number four, how do we diagnose rheumatoid arthritis? Well, for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to use the ACR scoring system. These guidelines and these points are oftentimes used by doctors to help them make a diagnosis. And I also use this to help demonstrate that our diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is based on multiple other factors aside from the blood test. So many people get focused on the blood test about whether or not the rheumatoid factor was positive or negative, and that is only one piece of the larger puzzle. Okay, so, so what, are, what are these items I keep talking about? So the first thing is going to be your symptoms. So this is why you have to talk to your doctor. This is why we need to talk to you. How long have the symptoms been going on? Where are your symptoms? Is it your knee? Is it your ankle? Or is it your hands? What do the symptoms feel like? Is it pain that lasts all day? Is it pain and swelling that's only in the morning? Is there anything you can do that makes it feel better? All of these things are really important and definitely help your doctor understand what you might be dealing with. So after you talk about what we say your history or what you've been feeling, then we move on to the physical exam. And the physical exam is key. I don't care what your labs show. What I care about is what your joints look like. And I'm not talking just about the joints that hurt. I need to see all of your joints. So on a physical exam, your rheumatologist is going to examine you from head to toe, looking at every joint. They're going to palpate and touch all your small joints of your hands, because that's where rheumatoid arthritis usually hits. They're going to look at your ankles, your feet, your knees, everything, your hips and your back. They're going to do a good skin exam, obviously listen to your heart and lungs. So you should expect a very thorough physical exam when you go in to check for rheumatoid arthritis. The scoring system actually asks doctors how many tender joints does the patient have and how many swollen joints does the patient have because those things are important. And then finally we get to labs. So yes, Labs like the rheumatoid factor and the anti-CCP antibody, which is another antibody associated with rheumatoid arthritis, those are important. But we don't want to forget about the basics either. Your doctor is going to look for anemia. They're going to look to see how your kidneys and your liver are working. And they're going to check some general inflammatory markers to see if the inflammation in your body is elevated or not. 
So all of these things get taken into account when we make a diagnosis for rheumatoid arthritis. You cannot make a diagnosis simply based on a lab test. Number five, well, what about x-rays or MRIs? Now, in some cases, especially cases where the symptoms aren't entirely clear or your physical exam isn't very striking, sometimes it is necessary to go a step further. And so a step further means maybe x-rays, maybe even an MRI or ultrasound, and in some cases, even a biopsy. Now, thankfully, for the most part, we don't have to do those more invasive tests. An x-ray can be very telling, especially in older individuals who also have osteoarthritis. Now, osteoarthritis is the type of arthritis we get as we get older. It's considered wear and tear and is a very different condition than rheumatoid arthritis. And it's because they're so different that on an x-ray, when a joint has arthritis, there are certain signs on the x-ray that tell us that that joint has osteoarthritis or that joint has rheumatoid arthritis. And so when we are trying to decipher which type a person has or if they have both, which can happen, then an x-ray can oftentimes be helpful. Same with an MRI and an ultrasound. Now it's key here to remember, what are we looking at when we look at these images? An x-ray, you see the bones. Sometimes you can see the soft tissues, but really we're looking at the bone. An MRI and an ultrasound of your joints is where we can see all the other structures around the bones. So we see the muscles, we see the tendons, the ligaments. We see if there's inflammation in that synovium. We see if there's fluid in the joint. These are all things that we can't really see on an x-ray. Sometimes the x-ray is all we need. Other times it's not going to give us enough information and we have to go a step further and get that MRI or ultrasound. Here's a good place for me to stop and explain what that synovium is. The synovium is simply the connective tissue that lines the capsule of the joint. So each joint, each synovial joint, is surrounded by this bubble, which is the joint capsule, and the lining of that bubble is the synovium. And it's that tissue that is getting attacked by the immune system when you have rheumatoid arthritis, and that tissue becomes very inflamed. And it can become so inflamed that the tissue gets bigger and bigger and bigger, full of inflammatory cells, and it can actually make the joint get bigger, get boggy, so it's not bony and hard, it's like soft and boggy and super painful and tender. So that's what the synovium is. All right, so that, that wraps up the first part of a multi-part series about the top 10 things you need to know about rheumatoid arthritis. Make sure you check out next week's video where we continue the list. If you like this, make sure you hit that big thumbs up, subscribe, it helps get us in front of more eyeballs because here at Connected Rheumatology, we believe that everything's connected. <laughs> we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because, like I said, it's all connected. Thanks and have a great day.